I got a really neat little project to do today, and this is really simple, and you can get it done in about an hour. All you need is a drill press. Uh, I read about this in the September 2007 issue of American Woodworker, and since then a lot of people have been writing in and coming up with enhancements on it, but this is the basic cube within a cube, and it's sort of a puzzle. It looks like there's a cube in there, and you wonder how did it get in there, because there's no way for it to come out. So it's just, I don't know what it is, but it's a lot of fun to play with. <laughs> so here's a closer look of what this is. It's just a solid chunk of wood. I think this is three inches by three inches square. And inside is a floating cube. And of course, there's no way to get that out of there. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of a conversation piece. And if you have it sitting around, people will pick it up and kind of wonder how you did it. One of the things to do about this is get a solid chunk of wood. You really don't want to laminate wood together to make it, otherwise people will see those lines and assume that, uh, oh, well, you just put it together and glued it all up. So <laughs> that's part of the uh, interesting part is to use solid block of wood. So cut a piece of wood square and we can get started. Okay, the first thing you want to do is find the center point on just one of the sides and you got to be really precise about it because you really want to get as close to that center as you can and just draw a line like so now I've got a center spot next you want to put uh, just a little X in one corner of each side and that's so when you put it through into the drill press you can make sure you uh, position it at the exact same location each time. Next you want to head over to your drill press. Set the speed of your drill press at the slowest speed. Uh, install a Forstner bit. In this case I'm using a 2 inch Forstner bit uh, to make the hole on 3 inch block but depending on the size of your wood you can use whatever you want. Set up a stop block on a fence. If you don't have a fence on your drill press uh, you can just clamp down a board or anything will work. Uh, the stop block will never change throughout the whole procedure. So when you get that clamp down you find the exact center point. When I drop the uh, drill press down it'll go right into the center. So that's the basic setup. So this first cut I'm going to go down just kind of eyeballing it I'm about a sixteenth of an inch. That looks like it there. One thing uh, to be aware of is I set my X in this location uh, so every time I cut a piece I'm gonna make sure the X is on the left side uh, it's kinda arbitrary it can go any place you want it but you just want to make sure that you have that in the same position each time you know just in case your block isn't exactly square take a square and draw a line from one of these diagonal lines that you made previously to where it intersects that circle. So about like that. I'll draw a line. Now that's going to give me an indicator on how deep to make the first cut. Now with that line drawn, I can use that as a guide to set up my drill press. And you can just line it up visually along the side there. And you want your bit to come down about a sixteenth of an inch higher than that line. You don't want to go any deeper than that uh, you know for fear that it would cut all the way through the cube so we'll inch our way down but for there set up a stop on your press where it stops a sixteenth inch above the line now that I've got that depth set I can make my first cut and I'm going to position the X again in that same left position and you want to start with the end grain because it's tougher to get through and it could chip out if you do that last so uh, just start So you just want to work your way around each side, always making sure that the X is in the same location. Also, make sure you uh, clean out any shavings that might be in this area so that uh, it can sit properly.
Well, the face grain is definitely a lot easier to get through <laughs> than the end grain. And with that final face cut, you can start to see the cube inside. So now it's just a matter of getting closer and closer to where it's about ready to release. And with all six faces cut, I've lowered the bit about a 32nd of an inch, and I'll just inch my way around each side. And if you can see that, it's almost ready to release. So I'll take it down about a 32nd of an inch the next time. You just want to be careful. You don't want to go all the way through or this will just break out and splinter. Now that I've got that down to right about where it's going to release from the wood, I'm just going to take a sharp knife and cut away the remainder. Try to go with the grain when you make this cut and uh, you'll feel it release. And with that final cut, the cube is released. And there's no real easy way of sanding it all down. You can use sandpaper, a combination of that and a rasp or a file, and uh, but eventually you'll get it down and uh, there you go. The only other thing left to do would be to finish it. And uh, if I could find my original one, this one that I made, and I used an oil finish on this. Uh, I just rubbed oil all over it. Uh, it's really not practical to put polyurethane or lacquer or anything else on there. I would also recommend not painting it because it's, I think part of the charm of it is to be able to see the grain of the wood and if you painted it, it would just cover that up and kind of lose some of the mystery of how it was made. So anyways, that's how you can make a uh, cube within a cube and you know, you can get it done in a half hour and I, I hope you give it a shot and if you do, uh, send me an email or uh, post your own video of it. It would be fun to see other versions of it. I've seen some that uh, have a cube within a cube within a cube and I haven't been bold enough to try that one. So, anyways, good luck and uh, thanks for watching.